my friend, the Kendall low rider. He is the official driver the low of the Kendall and Casey show. The great rider. Stingray Rob. He joins us now. So, one year in, brother. This is year number two. How much different is it being now, I don't know, veteran is the right word, but you kind of know where everything's going. How much has it changed from year one to year two? It's so much better now. <laughs> I uh, I was thinking about this the other day. I think this time last year, all I wanted to do was take a nap. I was so burnt out, so stressed, and now I'm like, oh man, I get to drive for AJ Foyt Racing. AJ's to the track. I'm talking to him. I'm getting to enjoy life. I'm like having friends over to the racetrack at the bus slot. We're like playing can jam and cornhole in between <laughs> sessions. So much better this year. I love it. Last year, you know, we had you on the show and we, you know, fell in love with your name and your story and you're a young guy and you're a good dude. And it was like, okay, this is our guy. Can you kind of take Take us through, because obviously we didn't get get to talk to you after the race, what that was like. Because we, you know, it was the buildup, it was the week of, we're saying, you know, what do you anticipate this being? Can you take our audience through what it's like to actually just the start of an Indy 500, what that's like? Well, let's, let's look at a history lesson here. Before modern times, we used to send our kids off to war to fight for our cities, right? <laughs> now we have sports. And racing feels like you're a fighter pilot in a war. Yeah. It really does. That's I mean, a you... pretty good metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's, um, you're in a cockpit, and it's like you're flying a jet. And when you get in, in that jet, when the race is going to start, you probably feel like you can tune out the world. Yeah. And uh, it, it's probably just a surreal situation where you're flying down that after that parade lap, and going towards that first row, I mean, you've just got to be a combination of nervous, and it's intense, you're happy, the noise, <laughs> the crowd, it, it must be a quite a combination of feelings. It yeah, is. We, yeah, and we have a... Um we have a life-size cardboard cutout of you in our office because you're the official driver of the oh, Kendall and good. Casey show. You're our you're our guy. Um, year one to year two, you enter this race knowing so much more, and I'm guessing just the ease of everything has made this a much more enjoyable experience for you this time around. Yeah, and you know, I kind of hate to say it, I don't have much results to say that it, they would have boosted my confidence, but I do have a lot more confidence this year, just knowing more and having those expectations ahead of the event. It's not my first time around, and so I'm not learning as I go. I mean, I can kind of prepare and anticipate what it each step is going to be like and so for me i think that that's kind of been the the best thing about this year is just like the the knowledge that i gained last year and the mistakes that i made i don't have to do that again this year so um and having a a teammate like santino this season has been very helpful as well just because he treats me like a rookie which i hate but i also love at the same time because it's lively i bet oh yeah he's very entertaining yeah whether whether or not we like it it's entertaining (laughs) um but it's been very good just to have him kind of give me the rookie treatment in a sense and like just keep pouring into me and pouring knowledge into me Mm -hmm. and i've had that from other guys on the team as well with engineers like michael cannon around as the technical director yeah Um, he's he's highfalutin i mean he's got a great reputation oh yeah of depth of knowledge and knowing your team better from last year to this year or, or clearer and more uh just getting more and more comfortable with the team that's got to help you yeah and you know i switched teams during the off season so this is a new team to me um but that doesn't mean that i don't have the relationships built a little bit better just mm-hmm. because we signed a contract a little bit earlier in the year this year um so i was able to go into the shop because they're based out of speedway there right downtown speedway so for me it was nice because i live here in indianapolis now so I could just drive over the 15 minute drive, pop in, see the guys, do some pit stop practices. I'd take them donuts and churros every once in a while, <laughs> uh, get the empanadas in there. And so it was good to kind of build a relationship before the season started, because this is a relationship business. I mean, if you look at motorsports, it's a very, very small circle that we run in. And so you got to treat the guys with care and love as much as you can and build that relationship early. Stingray Robs, our guest, you know, I was watching and we were talking about this on Monday um, over the weekend. I was watching watching qualifications and the the speedway and indycar have done such a phenomenal job of making that must see television do you feel the pressure when you're out there because i mean i look at it like okay you're on the track by yourself but right you know you've got to do a certain thing to even get in the in into the race itself can you talk a little bit about what that's like how the pressure to that kind of compares to the race itself just take us through that whole qualification process yeah last year i got my fair share of experience it seems like (laughs) being on the last row party there um But yeah, you feel that pressure. I mean, you got the weight of every member on the team. 
your sponsors, your partners, your family, your friends, everyone there is wanting you to do well. They want you to make it into the show. And that's on top of the way that you feel about yourself, right? I mean, as a driver, as a competitor, we want to win. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what we really want to do. And so even making it into the show is is a challenge these days because the field is so competitive. Um, and so yeah, they I, say there's two races. It is. One, it really is. Last, last weekend and then. And it's a different race car. Yeah. I mean, the car that we use in quality, it's the same chassis and everything. But it's not the same other than that. I mean, it's it really is a different car to drive. I mean, you're talking 20 miles an hour different mm-hmm. on this track, and we're doing 300 feet a second. So any little change <laughs> makes a big difference. What, what, can, you, can you just take us through, what, are you 22 now? 22. We had this conversation last year. Jim, I don't know what you were doing at 21 years old. <laughs> I was, uh, there was maybe some alcohol well, and quite a few girls. Well, I was running a political campaign, I but you know. Definitely not racing as <laughs> Indy 500. But I mean, it's still, it's a Maybe we're like, he's a grizzled vet now. It's your number two. You're still just 22 years old. And I am just amazed at how well you handle yourself. And can you just talk about coming up and how you kind of developed this just just very mature look on life and, and how you've kind of been able to put yourself in a position professionally to be able to handle this so well? Yeah, I mean, I look around the paddock and I'm not the only one that's kind of had to come up and grow up quickly. I mean, you you look at guys that started in karting at five years old and started traveling the world at, you know, 10 Brexit years old. Bush. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Kyle it, Bush's son. You got to you gotta grow up pretty quick. But I think along the way, my faith was a big part of my development. And it was my, my thing to lean on, my foundation to lean on along the way. And so um, dealing with those pressures is not something that I do naturally. I mean, I'm a homebody that wants to just enjoy life and play some games. But I, I have to flip that switch when I go to the racetrack and find my identity in something other than just what the results are. And so that's where that faith comes into play and that maturity comes into play. And it's something that's developed over time. I mean, it's that that process that you have to welcome in and start at some point in your life. Um, but as race car drivers, we got to do it a little bit sooner just because it's a requirement. And if you want to make it, you got to be able to adapt and learn and also allow the the blows to kind of fall off of you. Um, you know, it's like the old Rocky saying, right? It's like, it's not how hard you hit, it's how hard you can get hit and keep going. There's lots of highs in racing and there's a lot of lows in racing. And so you got to figure out how to learn to deal with all of those. Stingray Rob is our guest. You'll be able to see him this Sunday in the Indianapolis 500. And I know you t- you probably get asked this every time you go somewhere, <laughs> but it's sort of like your thing, right? And you had such a great answer last year. And it's kind of, it's perfect because it's like we saw you and you said, that's our guy, right? Can you tell us where the name came from? Yeah, so people are probably thinking, uh, I'm from Florida and my parents were, were marine biologists or something. <laughs> That's not the case. Um, How this, many times have you had to answer this question, by the way? Is it every interview you do? Every person I meet. Yeah. yeah. I have to pull Countless. out my ID, slide it across the table and say, no, it's my real name. I promise. Yeah. This is true. Um, but the story goes, it's my your parents, real name. It is. It is. So my parents were big Corvette fans. Mm-hmm. And so it's nice to be wearing a bow tie this year. I yes. was thinking I might have to change my middle name to like <laughs> Civic or something last year. Um, and they said that was a requirement if I had to re-sign with the team. So no, just kidding. Um, well, we're in a Chevy now. Got the Corvette side on our side this time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the, the longer side of the story is my parents' heritage, my dad's side of the family, is from Stirlingshire, Scotland. So Sting is actually short for Sterling. Yeah. Yes. And so yes. that was the first yeah. part. And the second part was both my grandpa grandfathers had Ray in their name. Okay. So okay. it was a combo deal. It was just a lame excuse I, to I, I, put Robert, the Corvette name on the kid. Robert, I he was from Bowling Green, Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, is there an interview process with A.J. Foyt? Like, do, do you meet him? Like, how does that go? Because obviously he's sort of like the Babe Ruth of IndyCar drivers. Can you walk our audience through how that goes to join up with AJ Foyt? Yeah. So I actually don't even know how this happened. It just kind of happened. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I say that there is a lot that goes on behind the scenes that I probably wasn't even aware of. Um, my manager is Peter Rossi, who you might recognize the Rossi yeah. name. Mm-hmm. 2016 Indy 500 winner, Alexander Rossi's yeah. father. Father. Mm-hmm. Father. Yep. So he knows so a few people. He may have his fingers <laughs> in a few different pies in the yeah. paddock. So um, it's kind of good to have have someone like that that has the experience with their son um, but also has your best interest in mind so they they began talking during the off season and Larry Foyt has been running the team for several years now and he's done a great job of evolving the team and building it up into what it's now becoming um, and so for me I think that what happened was is there was a conversation that happened at the paddock somewhere along the way Larry said that there might be an open seat 
Peter said, hey, let's talk. And the conversation sort of started. And so I was able to kind of show my skills coming up through the ranks, which doesn't mean a lot until you prove yourself in IndyCar. But I think Larry was able to take the risk on me as a young up and coming driver, um, seeing I finished second in the Indy Next Championship, seeing my consistency and my level of maturity at that level, and hopefully carrying it on in IndyCar, at least developing it again in IndyCar. Mm -hmm. One final question before we let you go. Got a minute left here. Do you see 320,000 people when you're going? Like, I mean, at any point, does it <laughs> dawn on you? Because you always hear that about great athletes. Like, they just tune everything out. But we're talking like maybe 40,000 people at a baseball game. <laughs> Do, are you aware there's like 320,000 people? I'm going to tell you what. It turns into a much smaller racetrack when there's that many people yeah. there. You go down to turn one for the first time on race day, and that turn one looks way narrower mm -hmm. because it's a tunnel of colors when it comes to people in the stands yeah. and everyone rooting and cheering you on. You don't see the individual people. It just looks like a mass swarm sure. of race fans, mm -hmm. which is really cool. And, and your heart's exciting. going. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it is kind of that same thing. I think I can't remember who the golfer was. Um but they were finishing up maybe in a PGA championship quite, I'm talking several years ago, quite right. a few years ago, and a dog walked in front of him as he was going to finish his putt. And they said, well, what do you think about the dog? I was like, what dog? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's kind of that same idea of like, yeah. what do you think all the fans? Uh, there was fans there? I, wow. I didn't Just know totally that. focused. Well, we, we love you, man. We're cheering for you. And uh, Stingray Rob, best of luck at the Indy 500 this year. Good luck, my friend. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank you. It's Kendall and Casey Show, 93 WIBC.